Good morning, everybody on YouTube. This is Rick Thomas from Obsolete Video Services. Hey, guys. All right. Uh, I've got several emails about this <laughs> and phone calls. So today we're going to do a, a video talking about this type of stuff. And maybe it'll give you a little insight why when you do video transfers or video production work that you need to have a studio or a television studio environment to get the best quality you can get. All right, I've been getting a lot of emails about this, so we're going to talk about this today. It's this topic today, or the topic of discussion, is time-based correctors. All right, I opened up my time-based corrector to give you guys a little idea of what's going on here. All right, here we have one of the most expensive time-based correctors you could actually get. And um, I just thought I would show you guys. Um, there is exactly... 12 time based correctors in this one unit okay that means you could hook up 12 pieces of equipment with time based correction in this one rack all by itself all right and it's pretty sophisticated because this is a time based correction frame sink all right and uh this is a very sophisticated piece of equipment during the i guess the late 90s or when just about when high definition television came into phase this company made these, these time-based correctors setups for TV stations. So this is a television studio, television station time-based corrector. I got this um, for virtually nothing. These things sell, you know, they go as high as 25, 30,000, sometimes as high as 50,000, depending on how many cards you have. This is a very expensive time-based corrector. Um, I got this for a very good price when I did get it because the people didn't know what it was. And then once I got it, I incorporated it into my system, which you guys know incorporates all my broadcast obsolete video decks from TV station of, stations of the past. Now, the reason t uh, time-based correctors are very, very important, okay? You're dealing with mechanical equipment, Okay, these machines are all mechanical and they create what's called error effects. Alright, and when the video signal isn't properly, uh, uh, as you'd say, stable or balanced or, or, or your levels are not hot, correct or your levels are off or whatever, a time-based corrector does all these things. When you get a TBC or a time-based corrector frame sync like this, this allows you to correct the video signal, all right, it gets rid of flagging, it gives st stability to the video, especially with stability of the video. Not all time-based correctors work the same, all right? I had to have the best because I work with some extremely obsolete video formats in the business. Type A, like this machine here is a Type A one inch type of uh, a video format, which is like broadcast level. Type C broadcast level, which is this one below, and the IVC as well. Also, you have to have a very good time based corrector when you're doing two inch quad tape transfers. We have a very similar time based corrector in my two inch quad rack, which is in storage. And so when I pop, when I turn those machines on, we're getting the same effect. All right. Now, when you have a time based corrector such as this, extremely advanced. You get the best video possible for your transfers. I mean, there is no better, especially when you're dealing with analog video recovery such as this. Um, I can go from Betacam SP, anything broadcast. All right, the time-based corrector, it, this thing is the best of the best. I was speaking about, not too long ago, about this IVC editor here. This has two time-based corrector cards on it, which are, are advanced for this unit. And yes, if you if you have video equipment that has time-based corrector, you still should go through a, a modern time-based corrector like that because of the fact it, it does it's not gonna hurt the signal, it's actually gonna improve the signal. Okay, a lot of video decks broadcast like Betacam SP SP decks like this, they had time-based corrector cards in them. Okay, and, and you still go through an external time-based correction, even if they do have time-based correction cards built into them. Just like this uh, one-inch machine, this has a TBC card in it. But I just go through one system with the, with the state-of-the-art time-based correction in the bottom of my system because a lot of older units, such as the Ampex, 
or even the EIAJ reel-to-reels like these, okay? Or even the Panasonic machines. You know, none of this older, older stuff has time-based correction built into it. Some decks do, some decks don't. Um, D5, these, these decks have cards for similar stuff like that. Uh, some of the production decks had built-in time-based cards, okay? But a lot of video equipment does not. Um, like I said, I deal with a lot of really old, obsolete video equipment. So you want to make sure that you have good time-based correction. We built a state-of-the-art studio here, and I do mean state-of-the-art, guys. There is nothing I can't do with obsolete video formats. But the best part about it is... I can give you the best possible capture through my system before it comes over to my computer. And now we're going to start using what's called AI cleanup, especially for these uh, analog video tape formats. And I'm telling you, it takes the video to a whole new level. Once you go to a complete television studio broadcast recovery work, such as what I do here with the state of the art old school equipment. And then we take it into new school, which is editing software and AI uh, cleanup, which makes your videos look amazing. This is what Obsolete Video Services does. If it's a very rare, rare tape, you're going to get the best of the best. Or if you want, we can actually go directly to ProRes, which is the highest quality video format you can actually do for recovering. In my opinion, it's the best one to use. But Obsolete Video Services, like I said, we use state-of-the-art time-based correction. This particular system is just amazing. And I'm going to just show you. This is amazing. It's got 12 cards. I mean, this is just unreal. This is one time-based corrector. This is one time-based corrector on eBay. It's like a couple thousand dollars. Okay? This is one time-based corrector all by itself. Okay? I've got 12 of these suckers on one unit. So... I can hook up 12 pieces of equipment on one unit. It's just insane. You wonder why this time-based corrector for television studio is so expensive. That's the reason. Because when you get a time-based corrector, most all time-based correctors you see on the market, especially like on eBay, they have only like one card in them for one TBC. We're able to accommodate 12 pieces of equipment at the same time here in Obsolete Video Services. And the best thing about this particular time-based corrector, it was the best of the best towards the end of the run. As you can see at the end of the card, you have some adjustments for your video levels. It's got a switch there for, for noise level, which you can flip that and it removes some of the noise out of the video, video that's coming through the card. And, and also it has st stability and everything else. This is a, a very extremely advanced analog time-based correction card. All right. So yes, time-based corrections are very important, especially if you're doing time-based cor correction using analog video. Because of the fact that it corrects a lot of the errors, the error rate in the video, the flagging, the... Um, just the, uh, like I said, the video stability, the levels. You can adjust... Uh, just all kinds of little problems in the video, depending on what the problem is. And then you can check it on your scope, which is what all main, main television stations would use at that time, so you can get the correct signals. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about time-based correction here at Obsolete Video Service, Services. We, um, we have a really advanced system here. And people ask me, how can you... Uh, uh, you know, the recovery and a lot of the tapes that I do, how can I get them so balanced like I do? Is because you have to go through a good time-based system such as this. Time-based correction is everything with analog video, absolutely everything. But this one here is a is a frame sync as well. And frame sync basically was uh, during during video production where they would send out a signal, go to a do a um, satellite transmission, and come back. It would just it would just it would just correct the timing of the uh, of the on-air program. That's a frame sync. Where this is a time-based corrector as well, which corrects all the signal going through it. And basically, uh, you, you want to get the best signal possible out of your video recordings, especially if you're doing obsolete video, especially if you're doing museum television work, anything like that. You're doing, you know, like I said, it's a whole other animal when you're doing broadcast tapes, especially when you're trying to do vintage video and archive video transfers. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video.